have everyone here and uh, Chad I was just uh, reflecting on your great comments about the leadership that Wyoming has and Michael thank you for recognizing that as well you, you know I just um, had the opportunity to be uh, over in Laramie with uh, some of the members of Eugene's group from School of Energy Resources and we were talking about what an incredibly exciting time this is for our country uh, you, you know, I, I really cannot think of any time in our history when the challenges have been as pronounced as they are, the opportunity is as broad as it is, the chance for people here to make a difference has never been greater. And really, all we need is just the will to get it done. We, a little bit of reform here and there, uh, with some regulatory structures, but really we are at that apex that allows us to be able to solve a number of these problems that our country and our world is facing. You, you mentioned Williams has about a hundred year history, a little bit, a hundred year plus history. And I think, um, what was it, uh, uh, 2012 was Wamsutter's 100th anniversary. So the, the two entities are closely aligned. And, and, and really, for Wamsutter and for this area, the time couldn't be, couldn't be more important. So let's just talk a little bit about energy. I've said this over and over again. Chad alluded to it. If you're going to do something with energy, and we know we have to do something with energy to power our country, we have to, uh, we have to be able to have dependable energy dependable electricity, dependable natural gas, dependable uh, forms of energy that we can rely on 24 seven. That's what's gonna make our country run. And when I think about what that means, that means that if we look at it from an academic standpoint and we say, as we have in this country, that the way we're gonna be carbon neutral is by shutting down industry, putting people out of work, and making sure that folks in places that don't understand energy the way Wyoming does make decisions about what Wyoming can do, we are going to have a very dark future. And I, there's no pun intended. You know, I, it reminds me when I was when I was growing up, we had a neighbor, a wonderful guy, uh, who was a Basque. Uh, his name was Domingo Oski and uh, he bought a new scout. Now, maybe some of you remember what scout, scouts were. They were kind of a, a pretty uh, utilitarian vehicle, uh, kind of like a Willys Jeep. It was the first time he'd ever had a vehicle, and he was coming down off a hill. Now, Domingo ran sheep all, all summer long, and uh, he was coming down off of a hill, and he did not know how to put the brakes on. So he was pulling on the steering wheel and saying, whoa, whoa, you son of a bitch, whoa. And the steering wheel came off. This is true. So finally, he was able to get everything shut down, bumped over a couple of things. And that's a little bit the way our energy posture as a nation is at this point. There are some things that we're doing that we don't really understand, but we can solve. And that's why it's so important to have the School of Energy Resources. When I think about our experience here in Wyoming, and as I've said, if you're gonna do something in Wyoming, if you're gonna do something in energy, you're gonna do it in Wyoming. In 1980, Hamilton Standard and Boeing stood up uh, two windmills uh, that were the most massive things we've ever seen. They were really tiny compared to what we see today. But they stood them up outside of Medicine Bow, and they never ran very well because they threw blades. Nobody understood what the what the challenges of Wyoming wind were. And now we have this just gorgeous resource that we can harness. But there are consequences to how we do that. You know, if we, if we do too much of it, we take away a lot of habitat. If we do too much of it, we take away some of the other resources that are underneath it. So finding that balance of where renewables can exist and how they can coexist is really important. Think about transportation, which is what you got to think about as you look at I-80 going across the country here. So much of what we talk about in the national picture, and you just heard it from California, we're going to electrify everything. 
God love you. That's a great thought. But just think about the payload that you're going to have to carry in batteries to be able to get across this country, especially to get across Wyoming at this point. You have one of the largest, in fact, the second largest wind farm going just south of here. It's been held up 15 years because it couldn't get its permitting in place. And yet the rest of the country says we're going to have a total renewable platform in about 20 years. How do you do that if you can't get things done appropriately, if you can't balance it? So enter the equation. How do you solve for climate change? And we've talked about it here today. You don't do it with renewable standards. Renewables have a place to play, make no mistake. But renewable standards do nothing to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. What does is leveraging our legacy industries, our ability to put good legacy resources to work with better technology, new technology, enhanced oil recovery. And then we start thinking about what are the fuels that are gonna drive our nation forward? Electricity will be part of it, there's no question. And Wyoming will be a great contributor to the electrical equation. But what really is going to power a transportation sector is hydrogen. And that's why Williams is so important. Williams's commitment to the University of Wyoming and our commitment to Williams and our ability to really solve in a free market atmosphere how to run this country with clean hydrogen. That is something we've talked about for over 20 years and never gotten as close as we are today. And then the question is, what are the resources that we're going to use to make all this hydrogen. Some might say it's got to be water. And for this part of the country and Senator Hicks, I would say that probably no one has a greater appreciation of how precious water is for this part of the country than Senator Hicks. So as I told uh, the Secretary of Energy, hands off our Wyoming water. We're not using it to burn uh, for transportation. We can do great things with natural gas. We can do great things with coal. And that's why Wamsutter is ground zero for the future of this country and for the future of energy production. And God bless you. Thank you, Williams, for being here. God bless you all for the work you do. And uh, wow, we've got lots to do. So let's get after it. Thank you.